Hey everybody and welcome back to another Teach Me To Code screencast. This is your host Charles Maxwood and this week I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, the main reason is, is because I've been working on some more stuff with Cassandra. However, it hasn't exactly, I'm not quite ready to, to demonstrate it. But I did want to get a video out this week and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about Ruby cones or Ruby koans. Um, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Um, and basically what it is is it's kind of a guided tour of Ruby and its features and it's really interesting I'm, I've really been enjoying it and so when I have a few minutes here or there I actually will fiddle around with it now um, the way that it works is you basically get in here and you can either do Ruby path to enlightenment or you can also do a rake and in either case it does the same thing so what it does is you can see here that it's giving you this test output and the test output basically is um, here let me clear this and I'll run it again just so that it's it's clearly visible so it basically says you do you have not yet reached enlightenment I'm assuming enlightenment means you got all the way to the end uh, you can see here that I'm a little less than halfway through so anyway what it does is it tells you where you need to go in order to find the next step in the path to enlightenment so if you uh, if you come over here and uh, let me open up the one that I'm actually on about control statements you can see here that these actually have um, assertions where it's assert equal blah 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 and you can see that I filled in a few of these you just replace the two underscores with the right answer so um, in this case if false you get oh, false value and what you're seeing here in this case is that if if you do an equals if if actually returns a value and that's that's basically what it's demonstrating here and then you you get these interesting notes like note ever actually every statement in Ruby will return a value not just if statements and where I was before uh, I actually recorded this before but ScreenFlow has been acting a little bit different now that I have uh, Mac OS 10 lion on here um, anyway so if we go back to about constants that's not what we want about constants so then what happens is you have these two examples here and I just want to show this because it demonstrates another uh, another thing that I really like about the Ruby cones so basically you have this class animals it sets legs to two and above way up at the top it's actually ha it's actually set legs to four so what it's doing is is exploring okay well which version of the constant is it going to get you know which scoping is it going to use um, because animal has legs equal four and my animals has legs equal two and so if this was a double underscore right here and I filled it in with two and I think initially I got it wrong I think initially I ran four but you know it tells you four isn't the right answer I'm looking for two and so you come in here and you set it back to two and then it says which has precedent the constant in the lexical scope or the constant from the inheritance hierarchy and you look at it and you go well from the lexical scope and then you come down here and it says it does this similar thing where it basically you know sets the lexical scope this way my animals and so then it says who wins with explicit scoping on a class definition and in this case the inheritance wins and so then it asks why is it one way in one example and a different way in another example and so then you start digging into how Ruby works and why it works in this way and why it doesn't do it the other way and in this case from what I've been able to determine what it is is because when you declare this class you move into the lexical scope and so when you're working in here you're already in that lexical scope but here where you add the explicit scope it doesn't actually load that scope when it defines the class and so it will actually take it from the inheritance over the implicit or the explicit scope there 
And so that's my understanding, and there's a little more to it in the way that Ruby does its class hierarchy and inheritance or ancestry. Um, and that's something that I think people should be digging into. But as you dig into this stuff, you learn different things. And if you're new to Ruby, then you're going to learn a lot of things about the way Ruby does things with arrays and hashes. And I can't even think of what they all are. Um, arrays, hashes, asserts, that's the testing that kind of gets you started. Blocks, classes, um, hashes, inheritance, iterations. Um, I, haven't done, I haven't done some of these, so Java interop, I don't even know what that is. Um, methods. Um, but, you know, there's more to it than that. So it, it really does give you a good feel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and quit this. Um, the other thing you can do is rather than run rake, like I said, you can run Ruby Path to Enlightenment, and it does the same thing. So that's just one way of picking up some uh, cool Ruby knowledge and, you know, kind of powering up, so to speak, on your Ruby stuff. So um, that's something that I intend to finish pretty soon here. But, uh, you know, if, if you've been working on it and you have some ideas about this, then, you know, by all means, leave a comment or something. One other thing that I want to point out was that at the last users group meeting that I was at, um, a couple of guys started messing with Ruby koans. And basically what they did is they went into um, some of the files that load that kind of give you this environment. The master says blah, blah, blah. And they started monkey patching Ruby to start to give them passes when they had the wrong answer in there. And so that was also rather fascinating and another exercise in learning how Ruby works kind of from the other angle. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, next week I should have some pretty cool uh, Cassandra stuff to show you. But in the meantime, go out there, learn something, and remember that writing the code is the easy part. Need expert help with your Ruby, Rails, or Sinatra application? Give me a call. My phone number is 801-367-6164. Or you can email me, Chuck, at teachmetocode.com. Thank you. Need expert help with your Ruby, Rails, or Sinatra application? Give me a call. My phone number is 801-367-6164. Or you can email me, Chuck, at teachmetocode.com. Thank you. New Relic is the leading provider of application performance management tools for Ruby and Java applications. Thousands of companies use New Relic RPM to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize applications deployed either in the cloud or in dedicated hosting environments. RPM Lite is free, fully supported, unlimited time version available at www.newrelic.com. All the leading Rails companies use New Relic including 37 Signals, AT&T Interactive, Shopify, Our Stage, IGN, and lots more. That was wonderful! Bravo! I loved that! Oh, it was great! Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful! It was terrible! Get him away! Hey, boo! Boo!